I made this quick video to show you how you can make a movable linkage in Shaper 3D. I made this quadcopter model last night, and I started with just a basic sketch of the kind of schematic I want to see. Now it looks complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. Each line is set to a specific length so that the lines can't stretch. And the two base points are not allowed to move. That's the two points that connect to the quadcopter. That's really all it takes to make a movable schematic of a linkage. So if I turn off the model parts so you can see just the sketch, and then I tap on the sketch, you'll see all the dimensions appear. And yes, that looks messy, but if you look close, what we can see is that I've tapped on the end point of one of the lines. And the end points are allowed to move because I haven't specified an angle between any two lines. So when I tap on that vertex, the end of the line, and I drag it up and down, I get motion. But you'll see my motors at the bottom were hitting the the quadcopter. So maybe I want to tap down there on one of those vertices and more precisely place where I want that motor to go. I can tap on any vertices, any endpoints of lines, and drag them to get more specific control over the kind of angles that I want to set. So once I had that sketch outline, of course I just made it wider, extruded up the parts I wanted, and I knew that things would fit and move the way I wanted them to. Now if we start with a sketch from scratch, I just draw three line segments, just kind of arbitrary angles. I have to lock the base points of the two end, the two lines on the side. Those will be rockers or cranks, depending on the length of the lines. And I'm locking the lengths of the lines here also, so that they don't stretch. And now, I've just clicked and I'm dragging that endpoint, but I can only drag it that far. And now I have to click this other point to be able to drag the mechanism back up. But that's all it takes. That's the basis of making what's called a four-bar linkage. It's called that because the fourth bar is the ground. So those two locked points at the bottom represent the fourth bar. Now I'm going to make a little hydraulic cylinder, or maybe it's a bungee cord, uh, and all I'm going to do is lock that bottom point. And because I haven't specified a length for that line, it stretches. So the motion is restricted by the, the three lines that are, that are set, you know, the length is set. Uh, but that fourth line, the length is not set. So maybe we want to draw a little hydraulic cylinder on that. So if I draw a short line segment and I lock its length and I draw some other little short line segments to represent half of the cylinder, um, here's another one, I'll make it a little longer. Click on a dimension, click the green check mark, and another little segment, click on the line, the dimension, click the green check mark. And now I'm going to try to mirror rather awkwardly. I'll, I'll uh, well, let's see, in this case, I have set that endpoint to be perpendicular to my midpoint. Now I'm going to try to mirror these. And I'm not real good at mirroring. I haven't practiced enough, so I'll mess it up a little bit, but then I'll click on the middle line, click again somewhere, and now I get what I want. Now I'm going to go back and again lock the mirrored parts because when you mirror or duplicate something, the, the set dimensions don't remain set. So none of the constraints or lengths are transferred over. I wish they were, and hopefully they'll add that option. So 
So you can see when I'm moving this, it's not quite working yet. So I'm going to make these lines parallel. I'm going to make these lines parallel. And now, because they're constrained to be parallel, this does a pretty good job of representing a hydraulic cylinder. I've got some length issues. My, <laughs> my piston is a little bit longer than is possible. But, uh, you know, it's the gist. Gives you the idea. Now, what if you want to see that in several positions? Well, you can copy. You can make several copies of the mechanism. So I'm just going to copy these down a set distance several times. And we'll see what that looks like. I'm just going to click on the copy icon there. Drag down one millimeter. Drag down again. Type in two. Copy down again. Copy down again. Now those lines would be, they would kind of blend together if you're looking at it all from above. But there's a neat little trick where you can just add a construction plane. And that construction plane has a little bit of translucency. So it's, it's actually maybe 90% translucent. And so if I make a construction plane and I put it on top of that back uh, mechanism, I'll start out by making a construction plane at that level. And it's an offset type, so I'm going to move it up, I think, a tenth of a millimeter. And now I have to scale up that construction plane so that it covers the whole area of my sketch. And this is going to take a couple of attempts. I'll click, I'll move it over, scale it up again. I'll slow at this. But that gets us a construction plane that's barely above that back sketch. And look at that back sketch. It's faded out a little bit. So now if I copy this up one millimeter at a time, of course, I just need three more copies because the one on the front we don't want to cover. That gives me this really nice gradient from the foreground to the background. So isn't that nice? So I can move that front sketch into a different position and we can see what's behind, which is faded out a little bit. Um, Here we go. Click, drag, whichever way we want to do that. And then I could turn off that front sketch, turn off the next plane down. Um, but in order to get that next sketch down to move the way we want it to, I have to go back and lock the lengths of all of those lines over again. Because as I said, when you copy or mirror something, the duplicate is not locked anymore. So a sketch like this is simple enough that it doesn't take very long. But it's a bit tedious, and I do wish they would add the option to allow, you know what, constraints of any kind, including length and angles and uh, perpendicular, parallel, tangent, all that stuff, to be transferred to the copy. Hopefully they'll, they'll do that. But this will give you the gist of how you could see a series of positions and get some sense of total motion. And it's not, you know, like the dynamic... Um, schematic models that actually plot the path of each point of, of uh, you know, each joint. But uh, it's pretty darn useful. I built some very precise mechanisms with it. 
So there's our final product. That's our stacked sketches. You can see what you get there. Now, if we start over, we make a new sketch. The big question here is, what if you want to edit a schematic after you've got it produced? Well, that's important to know how to do. And of course, we just want to set our base points and lock our dimension lengths. And we can see how it moves. Now, if we want to change the position of a base point down at the bottom, what we can do without dragging our linkage around in uncontrollable ways is we can lock that, the position of that joint, then unlock our ground point and drag it. Now, of course, we can't change its length unless we unlock the length. But if you unlock the length of the line and you unlock the position of the ground point, you can lock it in where you want it. Now we can unlock our top, we can lock our new length, and we can drag our mechanism to see what we get with these new lengths and ground point positions. So by doing just that, you can make all kinds of rocker and crank mechanisms um, we may find here that uh, we have a, a really rapid motion that we don't want, and so we can change the proportions, uh, like right there. So when that when that crank moves past that that ground point, the coupler and, and rocker really swing radically fast. Maybe we want that base point to be farther away. So we can unlock it and move it, and as long as we want that rocker to be the same length, um, then fine. We, we've got a little more controllable motion there. If you wanted to make a catapult, <laughs> you could have those, those points close together and you get a very rapid swing. But, you know, if it's an industrial application, maybe you don't want that. So lastly, I want to tell you where I learned this. I can't pronounce this guy's name, but if you go to this video at 10 minutes and 15 seconds in, he starts talking about how the basic principle works. And he's applying it to Fusion 360, but it works on anything where you can apply these kinds of constraints. And when I tried it on Shaper 3D, it worked. So uh, it's a great, great resource. And this guy's stuff is very good. I'm not a mechanical engineer, um, maybe a mechanical designer. Uh, and I learned about four bar linkages by looking at his Udemy, uh, in, you know, video video series, and I actually paid ninety nine dollars. And for me, for my applications, it was well worth it. It was fantastic. I learned a ton. Um, he covers how to move things, uh, mechanisms from a specific starting point through a midpoint to an endpoint. Uh, and being able to plot that kind of thing precisely is, of course, critical uh, for getting precise motion. Um, you can do a lot with just kind of playing around with endpoints, as I've shown you here. But if you want to know more, uh, and if, it's, if $99 is worth it to you, I really do recommend uh, the designing mechanisms using Fusion 360. It's a great starting point.